ฉันมีเยซูนิม The apostles Peter and Paul stand before us as two great witnesses of the Christian faith. They preached and traveled as missionaries all the way from the land of Jesus to Rome itself, where they gave their ultimate testimony by offering their lives as martyrs. Peter was a fisherman and one of Jesus' first disciples, while Paul was a committed zealot, intent on safeguarding the traditions of his ancestors. Alas, both made great mistakes. Peter denied the Lord at his most vulnerable hour. And Paul persecuted the Church of God by harassing its followers. The two of them must have felt aggrieved by Jesus' questions, "Simon, son of John, do you love me?" Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And yet. Jesus had called them by name, thereby changing their lives. He had put his trust in them, in one who had denied him, and in the other who persecuted his followers. Why had the Lord not chosen two witnesses of utter integrity? With impeccable credentials and exemplary lives, why Peter, when there was John? Why Paul, and not Barnabas? In the homily on the solemnity of these two founders of the Christian faith in Rome, Pope Francis stated. The starting point of the Christian life is not our worthiness. In fact, the Lord does not work miracles with those who consider themselves righteous, but with those who know themselves needy of forgiveness. He is looking for people who are ready. To open their hearts to him, people who, like Peter and Paul, are sincere before God. Peter repented and told Jesus, "I am a sinful man." While Paul wrote that he was the least of the apostles, unfit. To be called an apostle, they maintained this humility to the very end. Peter asked to be crucified with his head upside down because he did not consider himself worthy to die like his Lord. Paul embraced the name Jesus had given to him, meaning. Little, choosing to leave behind his birth name Saul, despite it being the name of the first king of his people. Both understood that holiness does not consist in exalting, but rather in humbling oneself. Holiness means entrusting each day our own poverty to the Lord, who does great things for those who are lowly. What was the secret that made them persevere in spite of their weaknesses? It was the Lord's forgiveness. 
in their failings, they encountered the powerful mercy of the Lord, who gave them rebirth. As human beings, they had failed, and yet they had encountered a love greater than their failures, a forgiveness strong enough to heal even their grave feelings of guilt. Only when we experience God's forgiveness do we truly experience rebirth. Indeed, it is from the confession of our sins and his forgiveness that we rediscover who we really are and can start all over again. In the gospel of this solemnity, the Lord asks, who do people say that the Son of Man is? The answers, a folk figures from the past, John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Peter instead replies, you are the Christ. The Christ, which means the Messiah, a word that points not to the past, but to the future, to the one who is awaited, the one who brings God's anointed to the world. Jesus is not in the past, but in the present and in the future. He is not a distant personage, but a living person. He is newness personified. The true Christian, then, is not someone who simply knows the story of Jesus, but someone who has experienced the love of God through Jesus, the Son of the living God. Paul repeats Jesus' name constantly in his letters. For him, Christ is not only a model, he is life itself. For me, to live is Christ. Jesus is Paul's present and future, so much so that he considers the past as waste in comparison to the superior knowledge of Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, let us ask ourselves, do I renew daily my encounter with Jesus? We may be curious about Jesus or interested in church matters or in religious news. We may open websites and newspapers that speak about holy things. But Jesus is looking for witnesses who say to him each day, Lord, you are my life. Having met Jesus and experienced his forgiveness, the apostles were no longer content with half measures, but embraced that of boundless love. They were poured out as libation. Let us rediscover who we truly are through a daily relationship with Jesus and through the power of his forgiveness. Just as he asked Peter, Jesus is now asking us, who do you say that I am? Do you love me? Let us allow these words to penetrate our hearts and inspire us not to remain content with the minimum attainable, but to aim for the highest achievable, 
so that we too can become living witnesses of Jesus. Every year, on the Sunday preceding the feast of St. Peter and Paul, the Catholic Church throughout the world holds a special collection called Peter's Pants, which constitutes a concrete expression of unity with the Pope and a sign of awareness of the sufferings of our brethren. Inspired by the evangelical communion of the primitive church, through the generosity of the faithful, the Roman pontiff can assist those who are in need and in suffering. On behalf of Pope Francis, I take this opportunity to express sentiments of deep appreciation to the Korean Catholic faithful, who in these past years have generously contributed for the material and spiritual needs of the Universal Church. The bishops of Korea have distinguished themselves in promoting awareness of the importance of your offerings towards Peter Spence and encourage their faithful to live their Christian faith through acts of charity. May the Lord reward you with abundant blessings for your fidelity to the Pope and for your solidarity towards the Universal Church. Amen.